In lesson one, we talked about what matter is, and we gave a definition for matter saying that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. In our last video, we looked at how we can use some different tools in the science lab to measure the mass of objects, but today we're going to focus on how we can measure the amount of space that those objects take up. And the name for that amount of space is called the volume of an object. For instance, I have a cube here, so this cube takes up a certain amount of space in this room and that space would be the volume of the cube, the amount of space that it takes up. We're going to look at how we can measure the volume of solids, like the cube, and then we're going to look at how we can measure the volume of liquids. Now, to measure the volume of a solid object, we use a process called displacement. And that's something that everybody that's ever got in a bathtub or a kiddie pool is probably familiar with. You know, if you get in the kiddie pool and the water is near the top, the water rises up and some might pour out. If you get in the bathtub, the water level in the bathtub rises up because as you get in, you're taking up part of the space that the water was taking up. So now the water rises up to take up the space above it. You displace a certain amount of water. And we're going to use that idea of displacement on a smaller scale to measure the volume of some different objects. And this works with any solid object that we might have. In this case, we're going to use our little brass density cube here. And this is just a little metal can that's got a spout on the side and we can use that to easily measure displacement and in order to do that we're just going to take some liquid I'm going to use green just so it'll show up better and we're going to add that to our can until it gets up to the spout and starts to overflow and once it does we're just going to let it flow out for just a minute until it stops because once it stops we know it's exactly even with that spout which means if we were to add any more water to it from this point, it would also flow out. Now that our overflow can's ready, we're going to empty this excess water, and we want to put an empty beaker underneath the spout, because what we're going to do is actually submerge our object into the water to displace that water, giving us the volume of the cube. So all we have to do is just carefully, we don't want to splash it out, but we're going to carefully place the cube in the water. It hits the bottom kind of hard because it's heavy, but you see now that water is starting to flow out of the overflow can. And that's the water that was displaced by the brass cube. In a minute we'll measure that, looking at liquid volume measurement, and see what the volume of the cube was. So in order to measure the volume of a liquid, we use a piece of lab equipment called a graduated cylinder. And sometimes these are made out of glass, like this one is. Sometimes they might be made out of plastic. But the neat thing about a graduated cylinder, it's got lots and lots of little lines going up the side of it. And these are called graduations. That's where it gets its name from. And by looking at the graduations on the side when we add liquid, we can see how much liquid has been added to the graduated cylinder. So we're going to take our liquid that we got from measuring the displacement of the cube, and we're just going to pour it in. This graduated cylinder measures up to 100 milliliters. So we're going to pour this in and see how much we have. And if we look at the side here, we can see it looks like 10, 15, 16 milliliters of liquid that came out being displaced by the cube that we put in the water. Now, we talked about measuring volume, and we said that volume is measured in one of two units, and those units are either milliliters or cubic centimeters. And typically we'll use milliliters for our liquid measurement, and we use cubic centimeters for our solid measurement. A cubic centimeter just means if you take a tiny little cube that's one centimeter long, one centimeter wide, and one centimeter high, that would be one cubic centimeter of volume. So one milliliter is actually equal to one cubic centimeter. So if we took a one inch cube, or sorry, not a one inch, but a one centimeter cube, and poured one millimeter of liquid into it, it would completely fill that cube because those are equal amounts. So when we look at this measurement, we see 16 milliliters of liquid, meaning 16 cubic centimeters of volume in our cube. Now the important thing to remember when we're using graduated cylinders to measure the volume of a liquid is again to choose the right tool for the job. You may have very small graduated cylinders. These only measure up to 10 milliliters. You have larger ones. This one measures up to 250 milliliters. And they make some much larger even than these. So it's important to get the right graduated cylinder 
for the amount of liquid we need to measure. If I needed to measure two milliliters of a liquid out, I wouldn't want to use my large graduated cylinder. I would want to use this 10 milliliter so I can get a good accurate measurement of two milliliters. If I wanted to measure 150 milliliters, these two wouldn't be large enough. I would have to use the 250 milliliter. And again, by looking at these graduations on the side, so if I want to measure exactly 150 milliliters, I can add my liquid to the graduated cylinder. until it gets exactly to that line that shows us that we have 150 milliliters of liquid. So some of our science experiments that we'll be doing this year, it's going to be very important that you use exact amounts of ingredients. We can use our digital scale to measure exact amounts of solids. We can use our graduated cylinders to measure exact amounts of liquid. So it's very important to know these skills so that we'll be able to do a lot of the science labs, experiments, and activities that I have planned later in the year.